That's like the basiest kind of intro you could possibly do. You go like in the mic. You, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? There are some people, and myself included, I don't balance out my mic very well. I don't know, it's a bit of a shame. I should really do better. You know what else I should do better with? Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the b and stream today on this fine 9th of September 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, you know the drill, busy week, I don't know. Um, but uh, I, I feel like I'm getting stuff done, some like ducks in order as it were to, uh, as it were to be phrased. Um, but no, I... Uh, it's been getting good, so how about let's dive very quickly into today's game. Greetings, Blob, how's it going? Uh, but yeah, no, we'll dive quickly into today's game. Uh, and by today's game, I mean we're gonna do, well, not we're gonna do something differently, because it's still Duke Nukem 3D, but this is the final and probably the most interesting release, because out of all these, like, you know, every time I keep going, oh, you know, I love, uh, uh, these, um, Kex Engine, uh, remasters of, uh, the Free Day, looking forward to the stream. Ah, oh, dude, I'm looking forward to it too, so, um, these Kex Engine remasters that include bonus content. So, I've previously played Quake and Quake 2, we've now got Doom, uh, the original, um, there's some other ones, Shadow Man was another one, uh, all these, uh, all these ones. Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary World Tour is a Gearbox software release from 2016 that may have predated that. I'm not saying that, like, there hasn't been remasters of games with, um, extra content, or, um, sometimes the developers come back for extra content. But 20th Anniversary World Tour is one of the earliest ones I can think of that does that, which makes it quite unique. Uh, I'm playing the 20th Anniversary version within a bit of a... E Duke 32 context because, uh, yeah, two, uh, we're almost there at 30. <laughs> it's like how our rush 50 would be this year, and I'm like, oh boy, like <laughs> they would not have, they would not have gone long enough to do rush 50. Well, especially you know, rip. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, Duke Nukem 3D uh, 20th Anniversary Edition is indeed a game that you can indeed run on PC, but I have a big problem. The mouse support is terrible. It's really atrocious. I, f I struggle to be able to use a mouse with that version. Instead, there exists a wonderful eduke 32 uh, stopgap, as it's referred to. And it basically lets you run the new version of the game in eduke 32 This means that you have the slightly different uh, MIDI sound font, as well as also Duke himself is going to use a lot of 2016 re-recorded voice lines. But we're here just for Alien World Order, because there's really nothing else that's different about the rest of this, other than you're going to notice the health packs do not have the red cross symbol on them. Come get some. I'm getting too old for this shit. So there we go, let's uh, get myself a savvy... I may be running this in a new version of e 32 as well, so you may notice some slight differences here and there when it comes to some of the presentation, but for the most part, it's basically the same, it's, and it's the same game engine that you've always had. Um, I will say, there are two things I love about this uh, 20th anniversary uh, set of levels. One, they have the old designers on it, and they still know their stuff. It, if a little bit as well, it's a bit of a breaking the engine limits, and going, oh my gosh, how many enemies did they chuck in the first area of the, of the map? Hi, are there any, any like extra bit okay there's a little bit of extra pistol ammo in every single one of these trash cans nice uh but the other thing i really love about this is every single song is a remix of a song that's in the actual or in the original game and it all comes together very nicely they got these little reflections even though it's just a texture on the oops even though it's just a texture on the water it's very nice. Every level is uh, based around some city around the world, uh, and uh, yeah, I th you'll notice a bit of a trend with it. Oh, there's a fly yeah, I was like, there's another one just flying around. Oh, got him. So um, you'll notice there's a bit of a trend with some of the levels as well. But even though there's only eight levels, uh, one of them being a secret level in level four that we'll spot. You can still do that. 
That's what I mean. If the expansions were so heinous that you couldn't re-release them. Man, I'm curious. I'm curious how heinous they really were. Um, we'll keep wandering around, I guess. Got some dudes underwater as well. Uh, there's going to be a, a handful of new enemies as well that you'll notice in this uh, expansion of content. Uh, but the one thing at least is that unlike the other actual expansions, this one you can indeed buy. So I'd, I'd give it a recommend, although certainly feel free to you know, play it in whatever source port you want. Um, because uh, the, the actual version of Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary kind of blows to run. Um, and if it weren't for these new levels, I would legitimately just say there is no reason to get it over an existing version. I'm just pressing up against every single door, hoping for the best. Because I'm looking at the street, going, where's the goods? Where is it? Let's see, we got like, I kind of see there, yeah. There's got to be a blue key card around here somewhere though, right? It's not under the ship, they would... It's a Devastator already? Already lost. Already lost. No time spent. This, this looks like it's a door, but it's not quite. The side alley seems important, but there's no key card. And we started in a side alley. Oh, I'm blind. There you go. I figured it out eventually, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, no, how's everyone doing? How's... if you're on Twitch, hello. And if you're on YouTube, also hello. Uh, I, uh, again, I'll just, you know, thank and say, uh, big props to everyone who, uh, is a return viewer, or if you're a new viewer, also hi. Um, but a lot of people saw the part two stream, which I always think is interesting. Usually you get a lot of attention on a uh, playthroughs of games, either if it's the very beginning or sometimes the very end. That was specifically three streams. Cup wonderful couple days. Very, very nice. It was specifically three streams for the base game. Number two. A lot of people saw it, so say if you're there, say hi. Uh, also, shout out to the one guy who did indeed notice that all my song title or all the stream titles are Genesis Duke songs. Very nice. Thank you for noticing. Met a few people I haven't seen roughly in 10 years. Friends of my father, with whose kids I was a friend. I realized a few things about age. Oh, dude, definitely. I. It always seems like very, um, what's the term? Oh. Um. Melodramatic. To, like, be like, oh, I'm old now. But, like, legitimately, I, I just feel so old sometimes. Uh, the times we played games in the 2000s are longer ago than the old times. When we adore the, the, the 90s. Yes, yes. Although there's a part of me that also... F there's a part of me that also feels like uh, the modernization... What is the lighting here? What is going on? So what, what are they implying Italians do in their spare time? Oh well. Um... But yeah, no, the, like, a part of me feels that the, the modernization of recent times... Oh boy. Oh, I can kick that fan, but it doesn't mean anything. Um, you know what I mean, like, things from 2010, I legitimately think aren't really that old. And I know it's like, oh, like, it's, you know, 14 years ago. But as in, in the same way that I think 20... 10 really wanted to like put a difference with 2000 and 2000 really wanted to put a difference with 1990. 2020 doesn't feel like it's really tried to be that different from 2010 in terms of games at least. Yeah and that's what makes it not feel like it, it's been that long since 2010. Smoke. Coffee. I love the way this level goes. Even though it's all, uh... It's all just walls and textures. It's kind of fun just to... Have some casual faces keep showing up. But 
just a reminder, the, uh... We, we doing this again? We're doing this again. Oh, boy. Um, uh, yeah, not for the innovative games, at least. Slop of big games get released yearly. Steam told me yesterday Black Ops 6 is out. It's like, oh, damn, I remember when 2 being new. I remember when Black Ops 3 came out. Sorry, not Black Ops 3 in particular. Um, phrasing. I'm like, which Call of Duty is the one I'm referring to? Also, uh, yeah, you may have noticed I was just on fire. That is because there is a brand new enemy, which I may have just blown up. Actually, no, he's chilling there. No, he's not. Never mind. Oh. No, he just got shrunk by something. Never mind. Is he like Ant-Man? He might be like Ant-Man. He's tiny sometimes. Oh my gosh, hello there. You're okay. I need to kill him every so often, but uh, he's a bit of painful. Uh, for the record, never played any card. I have also not played any, uh, any card, and I probably should at some point. But uh, I, I remember when, um, uh, and there's a, there's a good uh, Xbox Ahoy video on um, specifically Modern Warfare 1 when that came out. And just like how much insane hype there was for that. Oh my gosh. Um, how much hype there was for that game. Man, this is a bit, this is a bit intense, ain't it? can't hit them really when they're tiny and then they're gonna spit lava at you. And you can sort of sit in the water here, even if it may potentially be good water, I'm not too sure. And obviously, oh my gosh. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but then obviously after Modern Warfare 1, you had, um, after two years, because on off cycle at Modern Warfare 2 and 3 and then I got very confused recently when they were like oh we're doing Modern Warfare again I thought it was just a remaster and turns out it was also a remaster um and then they had Modern Warfare 2 and then Modern Warfare 3 was last year's release and it was a bit crappy but it's just like oh my gosh so many Call of Duties um man I guess I need to hit this button and hope for the best So many spawning in, I tell ya. Alright, are we good? Oh. Let's take it slow and steady. Okay, that's really, that's really annoying. <laughs> that's really annoying, come on guys. Get out of there. How do you get him out of being, being that size? Also, they self-destruct, just to add insult. Uh, but yeah, no, one, I don't know, one day I play a card, I guess. It's a curiosity, but also a bit of like, you know, they're probably good single-player campaigns, at least the, the first handful. There we go, not too bad, just burn all my rockets on that. Are these? Oh, I was thinking, I was like, was this two different little water pools? And the answer is yes. Or no. Man, it's. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Just get out of being small. Look at him, he's just chilling there. No matter what you do, he's just chilling. That's okay. Well, let's go down the trippy hole and, uh, well. <laughs> Very nice. Watch a good friend play COD 3 Crack Copy because we're in Germany and we're uncensored when Modern Warfare 1 had come out. The classmate played Modern Warfare a lot. Told me about it. I mean, it's like... I hear it's crazy influential. I mean, obviously as well. It's like, you know, they did the modern shooter well before... 
uh, other companies were doing it, and then <laughs> Medal of Honor was like, oh gosh, we gotta do it, and Battlefield was like, oh gosh, we gotta do it. But, yeah, yeah, I... I guess, you know, that, that's a that's a good segue. Battlefield had its own thing going. That is true. And Battlefield was its own thing. Like, Bad Company and Bad Company 2 sort of brought it a little more in line, but I still think the destruction angle was where it was played the best. Back in the USSR, baby. Back in US, back in US, back in USSR. Apparently all you gotta do is get high in Italy and then you're... Gosh. Are we already getting ambushed by a bajillion enemies? We are. I don't have a med kit, so I'm really trying to not. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm getting hit by way too many odd shots there. Um, they're too late up, but I only played the single player. But then I got a lot of bad company. Sorry, also got bad company too. Played that one. I tried um re like just briefly checking out Bad Company 2 again, and it's like, ah, oh, the master servers are down, and... I wonder if the Siskova sisters still live here. Mm, Natasha and Nastia. Nastia? Um... Yeah, so after the second and four... Yeah, ah, oh, Battlefield 3 turned me off the franchise, like, real hard, because I'm just like, oh boy, are they just gonna, you know, copy modern trends and forget about what made Battlefield cool, which is, I want to destroy things. Metro was not fun for me as a map, I tell you. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, all these people are just funneling themselves in train tunnels and just farming tons of grenade kills and revives. I mean, it's chaos. I, I, I don't deny it's, you know, people are going to have fun with it, but it's not for me. It's not what I play Battlefield for. I have more fun in Bad Company 2 than Battlefield 3. I wanted to do it with the community. Yeah, that as well. I think there's something kind of nice and homely about the 32 player maps as well. Well, I got a key card. I'm just curious if I should jump out of a building, grab some trip mines, I guess. I'll just take the lift back down. Look at that non-Euclidean lift. Right, what's going on here? Because we walked here and suddenly there were like 50 million enemies. What is with hitting that guy? The period of uh, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3 was me playing shooters PvP. And I saw it when I computed how much time I was waiting for it. Yeah, there's that. Um, if anyone's played, I haven't... Uh, for reference, this is a Valve. I I didn't sign your agreement. I've never played Deadlock. Uh, Deadlock, to me, has uh, some horrendous respawn times, which is normal for MOBA, but... I'm not a, a MOBA guy, so that always throws me off. What's going on down here? Oh, hello. Of uh, course, actual time was uh, much less than uh, computed. A third of my playtime, because me and a few friends were big fans of Medic Revive Trains. True, true. Heavily influenced in the strats. Yeah. Even for me, I, you know, I've, I've sort of stuck with the single player stuff because then at least it's like I'm bound to my own kinds of skill levels. I'm not saying that, like, my multiplayer friends let me down because that's a bit, you know. <laughs> you play long enough and you get to know how your mates play. But certainly it's like... Also, a lot of my mates are probably better than me. <laughs> that's, that's fair. But, um... But you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to be, like, that guy or, like, stuck in that kind of just, oh, you know, like... I try my best or I am the dead way. It's like... I just want to have, like, a decent time, and... It's been here and there. It depends on the game. A lot of them have, like, skill-based matchmaking, and I sort of find that, like... Sort of fall out of the, you know, the same window. Like, uh... With Overwatch, for example, it's like I couldn't play with all my mates. Because some of my mates were just, like, not as good. And some of my mates were better than me. And it's like... It always happens. It's like, yep, cool. Is that, is that a pig in a... Pig in a bin? Pig in a bin. How strange. Uh, we do have souvenirs, though. Somewhere 
right now. So we got we got the tank ones. That's right. We got a lot of enemies from uh, episode four brought over, which makes sense. Episode four came out ages ago. Just gonna make sure you get them. Um, but yeah, that that whole point of uh, modern games uh, flopping uh, brings us to. Uh, hopefully the last time I will explicitly mention Deadlock as a topic, because Deadlock, when it came out, I was like, who's playing this? Deadlock a week after, the answer was, no one's playing this, and Deadlock this week is, no one can play this, because Deadlock is officially turned off. They immediately announced turning off the game servers, like, two days later, well, sorry, sorry, like, they, they announced on Wednesday last week, that they'd be turning off the servers in like two days. And all these people really, really tried to like experience what Deadlock really had to offer because they bought the game and they were darn sure there's bound to be some kind of thing in there. And the answer is it was just like a multiplayer progression. You know what I mean? Where it's like, get enough XP and you'll unlock the, the item. Oops, this is a bit of a cramp space to work in. Like I, I see where they're coming from here, but man. Um, you had some really awkward stuff, like, yeah, people were just throwing themselves off cliffs to try and, like, finish matches quicker, get experience quicker, and therefore see what the end game actually had. Which is a bit weird, because I'm just like, man, you know, like, I, I get the, the comradeship, but it's also just like, man, it's, it's kind of cool. Is it worth it? I don't know. Um, there's some fun textures as well. Look at all these bottles as well. I mean, they knew our computers could run it these days. Um, man, okay, I, I grabbed a yellow key card in here, so my brain's just ah, there we go. Or That's a fun sound effect and a half, and I hate the turrets, and I really hope they don't use this. Oh my gosh. Uh, I have to admit, I still haven't gotten Earth Defense Force 6 because you need it maybe still. I think they they did announce they'd be doing something about it, but I didn't see that they had done something about it. So just, you know, double check. Um, uh, yeah, and exactly. If you got other things to play, it's not rush. That's, that's a big problem with uh, games as a service games, which I think let's do a, a Concord post-mortem. I sort of gave the reasons of why Concord, uh, no one bought it. Uh, last week, I don't think there's really tons of point in rehashing that and constantly ripping on Concord again. But certainly one thing I think is the biggest thing is the amount of money it took to make this title and the amount of money they made. Because the sales said that it had sold about 25... Uh, yeah, 25,000 units and about... It was like 60% PlayStation, 40% PC. So the current Steam Play accounts... Mm, you could probably extrapolate. It's like it's only going to be double that if you're going to count the PlayStation, and yeah, you got crossplay, but that's it. I wonder what's behind this door. Ooh. I do like how a lot of these levels have kind of two themes going on about them. Like, you know, you know, we had, like, the Russian base, and suddenly now we have this, like, uh, military bunker. Just wandered into. Very nice. Um, depending on the series and PS or PlayStation account, it could be quite different. Yeah, uh, yeah, like, the, the 6040 is, is, that's not a generalization. I think that is just specifically for Concord, it was that. Um, but this game was 40 US dollars. It, they specifically branded it as like trying to be overwatch priced so it's not a full price release it would have all that um i think it's got microtransactions and other kinds of stuff inside it and just based on the retail sales i don't know how much about the microtransactions they had um you know for the week and a bit it was live but if you think about 40 us dollars 25,000 sales that's 1 million us dollars of sales 
it potentially could be a little better because of the microtransactions, and it potentially could be quite a bit worse because Steam is going to take 30% of the PC sales. Also, it may have been retail, and retailers might also take some of the cuts as well. Big, big room full of dudes, ain't it? Um, so, okay, very, very horrendous numbers. Sony decided, ooh, let's just refund. Let's save face because, one, you're going to have a bunch of angry people. I'm curious about Sol Sins of the Solar Empire 2. Just haven't gotten it because busy with other games. I want to see what's in there. I got this one guy who's just chilling there. Is he going to show up? Or is he going to wander a bit too far? Oh, well. Um... But yeah, that total amount of revenue is atrocious. Uh, I agree with Sony's take of, I think it's better to save face and refund the whole thing, which I know also costs you manpower to make that happen. But hey, you know, I think that's making people right, especially for a game that they just, you know, they just bought and you're taking away so quickly. But does anyone remember Hyenas? It was a Sega game. Uh, that had an open beta, I think it was open, I think it was, um, last year, and the beta was so poorly received, they cancelled the game, and Hyenas was in development from 2017 onwards. It was another multiplayer shooter of some kind, I think it was a, an extraction shooter, I think? So, not quite the same as, uh, as, um, Concord, but certainly, uh, the same outcome of lots and lots of wasted money. I appreciate he opened the door as well. He's throwing me for a loop. Oh, stop throwing me for loops. How many dudes are in here? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, high, and it killed parts of Total War. Yeah, oh, exactly. Because it's, you know, it was by Creative Assembly, so they diverted lots of stuff away from working on Total War into that. I like how we've suddenly got a mini-boss chilling here as well. Wow. Wow, okay. I took that rocket like a champ. Um, there are several other games. I think Rumble vs. one that I I always remember of. Um, does anyone remember? Uh, not not Artifact, because that lasted at least a little bit. But um, Multiverse has had a weird one. It sort of had a proper launch, but also, like, what was with... It was worth taking it off for a bit. That's what you get for standing still. That that is true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm real tired of these games as a service games, um, and partially because of this. Because you don't, you know, you can buy the game and you still don't own. Oh look, another one. I thought I got him, but no, I need to get him again. He's the one standing quite still as well. Oh my gosh. We got him. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but I think this is also a wonderful segue to Astrobot. Now, Astrobot, if, if, harken back to my Dog's Life Part 2 stream, if anyone remembers, because I don't. Also, new weapon. It's the Incinerator. It's like the Freeze Thrower, but it actually is slightly more useful. And uses its own ammo. Very nice. Uh. Let's give it a taste on this guy. So it sort of burns enemies, you can tell, because they're red. But it actually works okay, because it gets them in a bit of a stun lock, and they die pretty quick. I like it. Too bad it's bound to, like, zero... It's going to be a bit bit of a reach to get there all the time. It's a bit dark in this corner as well. Um, yeah, how many shots is it going to take to kill these guys? Is it just the one and they burn? Uh, I guess i got to hit them twice. Still, two shots. That's pretty impressive. Three in this guy's case. And sometimes touching fire. And also and also not being able to aim at a distance, so um less fun than burning enemies and strong that is true. That is true. Or blood. Blood has like 
the flare gun. I'm trying to hit him. It's a bit out of reach. Just got old school. Ouch. Every time. Um. But yeah, oh boy. Um. Astrobot was the last game at the E, uh, at the, well, not E3, because it's not E3, but at the State of Play presentation in June. Concord was the first one. They spent 10 minutes going on it. Uh, one of the single greatest introductions of a flame weapon in gaming history. Far Cry 3's flamethrower is legendary, but oh boy, do I love ripping into Far Cry 3, and, uh, I will save some of that criticism for... Uh, a later video, um, because potentially I've floated the idea of like playing it on stream. Maybe. I don't know how well it would go though. That's my thing. But it's one that I have like a lot of thoughts on, a lot of opinions on, I'll tell ya. It, it, it is great for some things and it is terrible for some other things. And I think it is very emblematic of a lot of problems that have eventually arisen because, uh, developers or studios, not necessarily the developers, have taken a lot of the wrong points from Far Cry 3. I appreciate just constantly getting blasted by everything right here. Let's get him with the, the old faithful. Yeah, a, a, lot, a lot of developers... Mm, like... Ah... <laughs> uh, What's, what's one of the classic ones? Far Cry 3 has a big problem with its upgrade system. Um, I'm not saying that, like, you know, the whole game is ruined because it has a lackluster upgrade system. But rather, a lot of games have lackluster upgrade systems because they just see Far Cry 3 and think, Well, that's easy, we can add that in, and reviewers will love it. And it's like, oh my gosh. Like, just make, make your mechanics tight. Make your mechanics good. Um, the stealth thing in Far Cry 3 is also, it's there, but, uh... I don't know, it... If it wasn't incentivized by the experience, I probably wouldn't do it. I wouldn't personally be playing it with the stealth. I say this also having only playing, uh, the first three Far Cries? Yes, I did play Far Cry 1. It's a lot of... It's like a... It's like Just Cause 1. It's like a lot of people don't go back for that one. Um, the thing is it worked in Far Cry 3 is because it was not much materials so you had to gather, but it was a progression lock. Uh, yes! I'm a little bit apprehensive about, like, the side content of Far Cry 3 as well. This is a base and a half as well. Alright, where we aiming, boys? Unless you just shoot it. Oh, hi there. Oh, uh, that's an actual boss one as well. Well, that guy's a mini-boss. And this is gonna be annoying as heck. Let's get him with the fire. Oh. Am I screwed because I stood in my own fire? Oh, you get there in the end. But don't step in your own fire. It's not healthy. Uh, that would have worked even better if the story missions was missing, because half the tedious and boring the other half. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think as well, we all know, you know, the big, you know, slight spoilers, but, uh, the guy on the cover, who's also the guy in most of the marketing material for Far Cry, uh, 3, uh, is only the villain for half, well, two-thirds of the game. And, uh, then they proceed to replace him with someone who is not as interesting. Also, I sort of forgot that I had, like, my friends. I know, like, they're in the intro cutscene, but it's like, I don't think there's enough time you spend with them to care about them. Also, one of them is a complete dick. I'm very certain. There we go. This is a lengthy level, though, I'll tell you that. Which I have to... Yeah. Granted, though, they do give you the wingsuit, and the wingsuit is a great feeling, but... I don't think it justifies the rest of the game. Um, well, that was fun. 
which I then did only open world content because that was really interesting. If anything as well, I actually kind of like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon for trimming out some of the fat. It is shorter, I do wish it was longer, but I did like how it went. And now we are in London. That was exactly who I was shooting at that moment. Now, yeah, I would like to maybe play Far Cry 4, because I do want to see where it goes. But, yeah, you start getting into that trend of Ubisoft not... Oh my gosh. You get in that trend of Ubisoft not a... Uh, um, mixed feelings on Blackout. Okay. It's been ages as well. Like, it actually has been, like, 10 years since I played it. And it's also been, like, 10 years since it came out. So... Uh, Get some. But I do, I do like just <sighs> upgrades being just a thing, like just level over time, as opposed to like picking out some stats that aren't really that meaningful. Although, personally, I'm still of the opinion of <sighs> the progression is just there for a for a story reason. Though <laughs> that's I think the biggest reason why it's there, not actually because it makes the gameplay more fun. I don't know. Uh, I had too much of the uh, of the stealth mechanics of Far Cry 3, so it tricked me into trying the semi-stealth approach I adopted for Far Cry 3 when Blood Dragon is best if you go. Yes, I, I, I do agree with that. Um, but I would also agree that Far Cry 3 itself is more fun when you go guns blazing, and if it wasn't, again, if it wasn't for the experience, you wouldn't do it, but then you probably shouldn't once you realize what the experience is for. That's the problem with the experience, is that it's a false bait, and then it's pushed you into a playstyle that actually isn't the most fun. And it's completely, like, without you knowing. It, you just think that you're along for the riot, and you're doing the right thing, because you're getting the most experience. You can you can terminate. Exactly. Just play the game like this. You run into buildings. You're the one on the offense. You're the one trying to figure out where you go. Nice, fun little, little stage, though. I love this ladder as well. Very nice. It's not even like... It is a sprite, but it's like a little bit off the wall. Very nice. I haven't commented too much on this, but I hope you're enjoying some of these levels as well. If there's one thing, though, unlike maybe the, the Quake 2 and the Quake 1 stuff, they're not utilizing the new engine, really. They are sort of just pushing the limits of the current engine further because it runs better, but that's kind of it. it. And they re-recorded all of John St. John's voice lines. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, to, to mention Astrobot, uh, Astrobot, I think, was, like, the trailer. I was like, this looks cool. I just don't know how much was Astro's playroom and how much is Astrobot. But it turns out, I think a lot of it is Astrobot. A lot of it is that new game. How very odd for... PlayStation to release both these games um, in subsequent weeks. I know they're very different markets, but it's like so wild to see um, like you know, the uh, one game is the budgetary milestone. It is like they've put all the eggs in their basket and that better be the best selling game out there. And then comes Astrobot which is sort of like I'm not really sure if there's a contractual obligation to even have a platformer um, but certainly, you know, they got a Japanese studio, and in fact, actually, a lot of people who worked on that game were at Japan Studio, famous for creating Gravity Rush, that ended up getting shut down. Um, and, uh, like, you know, they need to be working on a project, because why would you have them otherwise? And then it's like, they make this. Astrobot, for reference, on Open Critic has the highest uh, critic score. Granted, you know, critic score, sh you know, doesn't mean anything, who knows. Um, cool. Very nice, by the way, having a TARDIS in the British level. Very nice transition. I love the music, by the way, as well. That's where the big guys were. Oh, hi there. I tried. Get it, get it, get it. There we go. Run away. 
Like, how much damage you take from that anyways? Oh my gosh. Here, dude's all over. Um, but yeah, no, it's got an open critic score of 95, which for the people who uh, are, like, not fun on Twitter.com, uh, they're complaining uh, because that's a higher score than the Elden Ring DLC. And how can anything be better than Elden Ring? Well, uh, like this, I guess. Also, it's a platformer. It's like... And, and also, it's a critic average. It's like, if it's off by, like, one, that's that's fine. That happens. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be a pain. Gosh. They're really loving these mini-boss style ones, aren't they? Okay. Um... But yeah, uh, legit, there are some people who are, like, absolutely, like, joyless on the internet. I, like, I'm, I'm not a Sony guy, and I, I don't wish for games to flop. Like, what I really, like, you know, want is, particularly games on my platforms that I own, that'd be nice. Although, I'm completely of the opinion of Astro Bot is probably never going to come to PC. Like, what are the odds? It, you, you fly a PlayStation 5 as your spaceship. Are you, is that ever going to come to PC? Probably not. Um, but that's okay, I guess. You know, they, they got to have exclusives. <laughs> that's that's one thing. Um, but then also, it's like, yeah, you know, like it's it's been received well. It's uh, like it looks fun to me in trailers. I'm I'm happy for it. I'm like, yeah, you know, this is an experience that people will enjoy, and I really really want it to do well. And also, it's of a genre and a style of of game that I really do want to also do well. I really want platformers to come back in vogue, and I really want, um, I really want, uh, like, games that don't have massive budgets and massive tail ends and the development cycle, and they're constantly just having to pump out DLC and things like that. It's just like, just make a game, you know? Like, just release a thing. How hard is that? How, you know? The, the hard aspect is, uh, obviously, to an investor, Astro Bot is a one-time sale. And while they know that there's going to be people who are like me and probably aren't going to buy the games as a service game, so they make this as a compromise. Put all their money into the big budget thing that will make them a ton of money, maybe. And then you release Astro Bot just because otherwise, you know... I don't know. But, like, on the flip side... A weird spot for the yellow key card as well. Okay, sure. Um, but on the flip side, I actually think that like the games as a service games should be like such a not a not a footnote, but like they shouldn't be the main priority because there's a big you know like what's the term uh, the the uncomfortable truth of games as a service games, which is every game as a service game competes against each other. The ones from 2017, the ones from 2014, and so on, are all competing against each other in this day and age. You cannot release a game in 2024. Hi, I would like to... That wasn't quite it. There we go. Where do they keep coming from, these, like, extra dudes? But you can't release a, a game in 2024 and suddenly think that Genshin Impact is still not a competitor, or Fortnite is still not a competitor, or uh, PUBG is still not a competitor. Tons of people still play PUBG. Like, there's, there's tons of ones. Concord is yet another title in an oversaturated market, but it's also yet another title full stop. Everyone, for some reason, so many studios are trying out this thing, and it's like, man, it's not just like, oh, you release a game and no one bought it. It's, you had all this development time and all these years of prep, and no one bought it. Suicide Squad, the exact same thing. I uh, forgot to mention that one in my run through of games. It's like, oh my gosh, and there's bound to be more and more examples. Like, it's such a shame. But here is Astro Bot. Astro Bot is eternal. It released, and it is in that state, uh, maybe with some small patches, and maybe if they wanted to shove in some free content, sure. It's not a requirement. It's not a thing that I, I think is necessarily going to happen. But sure, you know, whatever. Uh, but like, it exists. It's a product that exists and captures a moment, like, 
that should be praised. It's sort of like, you know, what's the term? Some people always go like, that should be the normal, we shouldn't praise it. And a part of me is like, yeah, sure, okay. But also, hey, game studios, like, that's the kind of stuff I would love to, to buy and play. I do like, um, what is this? Uh, Saffron City's gym. I assume I'm in room zero. I need to go to the different chambers for uh, get that. Uh, I can guess I can go to two, spot that guy. It's not that confusing because they, <laughs> they number everything. Playtesters probably were like, uh. Side note as well, I like that these, um, you know, extra levels, and not just in this game, but really kind of any of these boomer shooters that end up getting, uh, like, remasters with extra, you know, new levels and stuff, they never seem to feel that they need to dumb down the new levels or dumb down the existing levels sometimes. They sort of play it a bit pure. I think, you know, one, because it's easier that way. But also, I think they do realize that it's like, yeah, you know, like, who's the people buying Duke Nukem 3D? People who sort of want... A, a relatively authentic experience. Uh, now, that being said, there are some people, yeah, obviously there are some people who are, you know, oh, I hate Sony, I hate PlayStation, oh, they made Concord, rah, 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 but it's like legit, like, you know, separate the, the two things and go, hey, there there is a good game somewhere in there, at least on the surface, I don't know, I haven't played it, but also, I can recognize the ones that I, I see people are enjoying and stuff like that. I think that's... That should be praised. Uh, also, uh, time to actually rip on some people on the internet. Uh, people who are saying that uh, Astro Bot is incredibly, incredibly difficult. As in... Like, as in... Sorry. <laughs> Not as, You can find games difficult. And there's going to be some people who are like, oh, I, I don't play... 3D platformers, it's gonna be hard. And I completely get that, and I completely accept you for that one. What I probably rip on is more the people who make it a point that they love Dark Souls and, like, hard games and stuff like that. And, you know, that kind of, like, gosh, just sliding out of there. Um, and then suddenly here comes Astro Bot, and suddenly it, like, whoops her butt because it's a, mm, a different kind of game. And also one that, from observation, doesn't seem that handholdy. Uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what? Like, I would highly recommend they play lots more games, because um, some of it is like, this is not a, okay, this one's not as much a dig, but it's like different people have different opinions, they come from different kind of backgrounds and have played different games. I personally have not played a lot of real-time strategy games, so I'm going to find my, uh, my skills in those kinds of games is very, very weak. But you give me a rhythm game, I should be alright, I should, I should be able to pick that up pretty alright. Um, you give me a 3D platformer, I'll do alright. You give me a, a boom a shooter, <laughs> rumbling about. There's not another guy in a bathroom stall. No, I would have blown them all up by now. And this is just on the inside, but look at this, it drops down. That's right, look how it just, just keeps going. All these levels just transition into very, very interesting kind of side areas, because this is still the same London level that where we had the TARDIS like eight minutes ago. <laughs> and now we're in Parliament House. Listen, it's kind of funky playing on the, <laughs> the steps, but I'm okay with it. Again, with the, with the boss fight though, <laughs> I tell ya. He's got the end of the level right behind him as well. So if you want to feel gutsy and press that button, be my guess. If you want to just take a rocket to the face, be my guess. It's because you can't circle straight from him. Because he's like chilled up against the wall there. Can this be like self damage, like what he's doing right now? Oh my gosh, I'm eating the, the stray rocket, I tell ya. Got the Devastator. Maybe it'll help. Whoop. I'm 
not having a fun time with this guy. Come on, we got we gotta get him. We gotta get him, at least. Let's Oh my gosh. We gotta get him. Come on. Oh my goodness. Stuck on the window, stuck on the window. Listen, if I'm keeping a bit of distance, it's probably not too bad, but... That poor guy is gonna get hit a ton though, I tell ya. Um... There you go, first try. Unfortunately, these extra guys probably aren't gonna mean too much. Oh, he's the one that was still alive, oh my gosh. Lots of Devastator ammo, though. If you notice, I do not know where the secrets are as well. Like, are you telling me there is no secret back here? Or by sitting on the chair? Nah. Who knows? Well, let's end the level. So that's three levels down. We've got five to go. Let's rock. Let's rock. Mirage Barrage. I like Egypt levels. Egypt is a very, very cool place, and I don't care that it looks repetitive as heck, and it definitely will look very repetitive. It's fun. I like my Egypt. And I hate, I hate the sentries. Have I reiterated? I hate the sentries, so... Um, but yeah, I... I don't know. With, uh, people on the... I guess... I guess I'm kind of ripping on no names on the internet, like... I don't really have a strong stance on like, Oh, how dare you find the game, like, hard. I think it's more... Egypt and Titan Quest is always my lead. True, there... E Egypt and Serious Sam. It's literally the whole game. Um... But I... No, I agree. There are some games where the Egypt levels do go on for a very long time. Uh, and if there's one thing I'm gonna rip on this level because I know it from memory, is that there are a ton of eggs. You're going to hear them open up, and there's just so many of them. Like, most of this enemy count is going to be there. I like, I like how these guys fly over and try to get you from an aerial position, though. It's very fun. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I take back my opinion there of like, am I just ripping on like, just someone on Twitter who literally has no presence and is just legitimately finding Astrobot hard. Um, but there is also like, when people say it is very, 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 very hard, I think the general sentiment I'm seeing is, it is no harder than things like the dark side of the moon on uh, Mario Odyssey. Um, some people are saying if they if you played Sackboy, it's also got a hard section at the end of it. I've never played Sackboy, so I don't know personally, but certainly it's like you know, there's examples of games that it's like, hey, you know, it's it's not as bad as you expect. Um, to which uh, this one guy then tried to defend his uh, inability to beat this section, or at least his claim that it was truly, truly super duper hard, saying. Uh, he's played lots of games on the Mega Drive, and a lot of people go and, uh, and yet, this is incredibly hard. I know that, like, 3D platformers and 2D platformers are not quite the same, and I know as well that, like, there's a gap. There's certainly, like, you know, him saying he played Mega Drive games may potentially mean he hasn't played games for, like, 30 years, and to that, I completely get why this one may be kicking your butt a fair bit. But also, the clip he showed, I don't know, to me, kind of looked fairly ordinary. It was, uh, I don't know the section of the game, so I won't be able to cite it. And I don't remember the guy, so I also won't be able to cite it. You're just gonna have to take my word that I saw a random clip of the game on Twitter and saw it. Hey, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, is it? Um. But, uh. He also, some other commenter also said this is, like... Dark Souls hard, and this gets me into a whole point, and I, I alluded to this, like, a couple of weeks ago. There's a bunch of... There was one video I saw, um, where some, some guy, uh, the, the guy, the, the person in the tweet specifically didn't even name drop them. He was like, I don't want this guy to get, like, 
any attention because there's going to be people who send threats over his claims. And he's like, some of the parts in this video are actually pretty okay as well. It's just that one part seems very just, is there any better way to explain this? And he said, God Hand is what would happen if Dark Souls and Doom had a baby. And then he makes the point of, yes, God Hand did come out before both those games, and even it came out before Demon Souls, if you really wanted to go there. Um, but then he justified his point by saying, I'd say, or you said God Hand would be one of the first examples to incorporate the Dark Souls mentality of hard but fair, as opposed to easy. Uh, and then he shows a clip of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, or hard because the designers suck at their jobs, shows a clip of Mario Sunshine, or uh, hard because they just want to steal your quarters, and then I don't recognize the, the kind of arcade shmup that looks like a 80s, um, just kind of space shoot em up with some asteroids, but not specifically asteroids, I just don't know the game. Um, and that was all the clip was. I tried looking out, I found who the guy was, but I, one, I can't remember off the top of my head, and two, uh, I also couldn't find the specific video. Um, I found a video about God Hand, but his microphone quality was different, so... Um, but yeah, I, he's a big YouTuber. He's got like a million subs. Two million subs, maybe. I'm like, should be okay to take some criticism, I guess. But I think it goes to the point of video essays and how do you convey ideas. Dark Souls is a game that uh, a lot of people recognize. Have a lot of people played? I'm not 100% sure. I, I think a lot of people have definitely given it a go in Dark Souls and Elden Ring and all that stuff. is Bloodborne and uh, you know, Sekiro by extension, even though Sekiro is kind of a fairly different game. I hate these like turrets, by the way, that are like, up there. It's like I can't do anything about that. Um, but I will say, I love how suddenly now you know, you, you can make these, like, little corridors, you know, under your dominion, because you just jump over all this stuff. Is there particularly anything up here? Not really. Also, you get some weird parallax going on there. So I was going to say, did we start in here? It's very hard to know where you've been. Nah, that's the start of the level, just chilling here. The Desert Pond Diablo 3. Oh boy, I should play Diablo 3 at some point. Ah, uh, there is one thing, though. Why so serious, Sam? That's right, we have a, a, a remaster of a 26... Sorry, of a 1996 game, citing a 2001 game. The tables have been turned. <laughs> but it's great, I love it. Good reference. Good reference. It doesn't really do anything, though. Um... You can get out like that. It's not too bad. Anyway, all you gotta do is climb up this slope. And then shoot a bunch of dudes, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I the, there is just a big problem with like video essays where it's like, you, in order to convey your ideas, you have to call upon commonly cited or commonly played examples. And I think... Part of that really, really depends on your audience, and part of that really depends on your own perspective as well. I think video essayists really shouldn't be afraid to just, like, say what they know. Like, I, I, I'm gonna say with a big asterisk, um, which I'll get there. Um, but, like, if you know that God Hand is directly inspired by older titles, um, and particularly other beat-em-ups, like, uh, what's, uh, what's one? Not Streets of Rage. It's like some other ones where it's like the Twitter thread brought up some good examples of like, hey, if you actually want like one that this is directly inspired by, this is the game. And I'm like, yeah, like if you actually do know that, just feel free to say that. You don't have to say Dark Souls just to convey a point of it's hard because, you know, if you mention other games, like, I have I mentioned Crystalis on stream? I'm going to continually mention Crystalis. Maybe one day I'll play it on stream, but Crystalis is. A god tier game. I like, by the way, that you are facing the right direction to gauge- Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate they've pointed you in the right direction to spot that that's happening as well. Where, uh, 
you have to go up to the front of this door, grab the key card, go back there, and then come back up because you blew the front of the door open. It's a bit of a track, but sure. Drop down the hole. Groovy. And we got this kind of weird set. Oh, hi there. Uh, yeah, that's right. We gotta reuse these enemies. Don't you love them? They're your favorite enemies. Hey, I mean, it's been a while since we've actually seen them. I hate these guys more, I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, if, if you... Yeah, if... If you know that there's a better game, just cite it. If you don't know that there's a better game, this is when we start getting into the whole are you qualified to be a video essayist? And a part of that, I am guilty of myself because before before I did the streams, I did some video essays of my own. And they're still up because I'm not ashamed of them. But I certainly had ideas for more video essays to do. And I was really genuinely afraid of like getting stuff wrong, because when I did the Payday 2 video, Payday 2 changed under the hood. Payday, which also sort of couples with my uh, resentment for service, games as a service, because it's like the stuff that I actually did really enjoy out of Payday 2 disappeared, and Payday 2 proceeded to introduce kind of trash and real average levels and make you pay for a lot of it as well. I'm not saying, you know, they gave you a lot of free content. Payday 2 when it was new was great. Uh, yeah, exactly. People do rip, some of my mates do rip on things like the armored transport heist. But I'm like, man, you know, like, it's kind of got, like, maximum variety stuff going on. Uh, so for reference, uh, there are four buttons. You're going to need to wander around and push all the buttons. Uh, and the buttons all exist in these little side chambers that now have opened up after reaching the top there. Uh, you'll need to notice that there's a little, little kind of push pin there. Uh, oh my gosh, everyone's favorite enemies. At least they only appeared for one level. Hate them, but eh. Uh, then they repeatedly made progress. Well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, especially as well. Oh, you gotta hit Infamy. Now you gotta hit Infamy 5. Now you gotta hit Infamy 25. Ah, you might as well go up. To, does it go up to 100 now? Maybe. Oh my god, that's not too bad if you just run forward. Uh, one of the chambers is like through here. I love the way the map's sort of got this tunnel going on here. That's outside, yeah. I'm not saying, so, yeah. Oh my gosh, these walls. Oh my gosh, these walls. But like, yeah, my, my whole S, like, video essay on like how Payday 2 is a great game at making you feel like you're actually heisting as opposed to being like the action blockbuster movie star. Um, and basically forcing you to actually adapt uh, as opposed to just, you know, like, going in, oh, this is this level, and I'm going to memorize and exactly nail this one level. Uh, when it already takes dozens of hours to max out and they repeatedly slow that down and release... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not too sure how people respond to Payday 3, by the way, but... Um, I definitely think uh, maybe not as great as Payday 2, people are definitely saying. And... Uh, Perhaps the DLC is a bit more, like, revenue gaining, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of designed to gain revenue. Not to say Payday 2 didn't do that. Cough, cough, gauge, weapon, pack. Like, ugh. You gotta watch out as well, remember these guys have the shrink ray ability. And they bleed acid. Gosh, he's running at me. I can barely see anything in here as well. Um, but yeah, like, uh, all my bits, a lot of points I mentioned uh, just didn't exist anymore. And uh, part of my, part of my video, I'm also just like, hey, you know, like, 
Is it, was I making the right opinion? I don't know, because... Given that they changed it, and given that I didn't see people exactly resent... I love that, by the way. Use the shrink to be able to go up this tiny little ledge. Oop. Very nice. And you get the shrinker as well. That's our third one, by the way. You should see that there's uh, three pillars. Oh, you can't see behind the big one there. And I also like it. you can crouch out as well. Very nice. Um, I did one on Tropico, and I'm still happy about the Tropico one, but my experience with RTSs is not very high. And also, it's sort of saying the obvious, I feel, so I'm like, eh, okay. Uh, the Cook Serve Delicious one, though, I will still stand by. I will go, hey, Cook Serve Delicious is great. My Doom 2016 one uh, was too topical, I feel. Like, it... It's, a. Uh, what's its, um... It's always Duke. It's always Duke. That's a fun sound effect. Oh my gosh, I hate the flamethrower dudes. That's gotta hurt. We get him, we get him, we're good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Doom one, I'm like... <laughs> my complaints of it feels more like Quake than Doom, I'm like, uh, that... That hasn't held up, and I feel like there's probably a lot of better ways to explain that. Um, I like how you then shoot that, and then suddenly this becomes kind of, kind of a big portal. Very nice. But, uh, well, you know, you know the drill. You know the drill. Shoot the mini-bosses. I just realized my inventory goes the wrong way. Because then the keys go in the wrong direction. It's a lot of enemies though, I'll tell you that. Wow. Um but yeah, so that that's what kind of convinced me to not make more video essays. And instead I was like, what am I good at? Rambling in front of a camera. Well, not in front of a camera, but like in front of a microphone and just playing a game and perhaps showing off fun experiences. So that's sort of what I transitioned back into. I think the video essay thing um, was a nice fun experiment because I was sort of weary of constantly playing like the games and then doing the editing and all that stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. So if you press this button, we'll now have these generators open. Lot of gyps. Um, but certainly, uh, a part of me is like, uh, not that I'm envious of the video essays, but like, part of it is like, oh, you know, we've got lots of subscribers and lots of traction. And there's a part of short form content that does attract more attention more than like the really long streams. But also, there's some people who stick around for the streams. Greatly appreciate those people. Oh, you thought we were going to end the level? Nah. What you got to do is turn around and walk towards this wall, because it just casually becomes a secret exit. What a bait, it's right at the end as well. So welcome to the secret level, Prima Arena. Like Primer Guides, but not quite. You know what we're in for when you got the toilet guy. Two toilet guys, oh my gosh. Lockers, very nice. Groovy. Oh boy, what are we in for? I think I remember the secret level being not that bad or real intense. I think it's because it had a lot of the small hit scan type enemies here. Um, so to go back to this guy, uh, his opinion on Dark Souls, I'm like, ah, uh, boy, like, or rather, of God Hand being like Dark Souls, hard but fair, like. Just on that point as well, I would love to say Castlevania on the NES is my perfect example of hard but fair. Because Castlevania 1 is always observable. There isn't really anything in Castlevania that you're like, Oh my gosh, I never knew this was a thing, other than you haven't gotten that far in the game yet. And a part of me is like, yeah, sure, okay. Like, 
you could make the case of um, constantly having to play bits. Man, I love that they got so many of these on the toilets in this level. Um, but constantly having to play bits because you didn't know what was about to come up. Sure, okay. I think every game is guilty of that to some degree and it just depends on how much wiggle room they give you. Obviously as well, if you've played enough games you'll sort of be in on the tropes and things like that. What is going on here? Just gonna... Cash. I think I actually remember this level being really confusing for some reason. Or it's just a secret, sure. We're in some good stuff out there. I'm getting flashbacks to, I know I mentioned Far Cry 3 earlier. You remember the ending to Far Cry 1? If anyone's played that one. Like the kind of cradle sequence where you got the weird little kind of staging area with the door. And I, like I was playing on a really hard difficulty level for some reason. I was just like, I'm just gonna freaking like camp by this door and hope for the best. And it was, it was such a campy scenario, I tell ya. Um, but yeah, his, this, this guy's take on hard but fair, I'm like, I think Castlevania is the perfect example of a hard but fair. Castlevania on the NES doesn't present, sorry, doesn't like, expect the player to, to just pick up on real hard things right away. It always, you know, gives the player a cushion. Here's the scenario in a, you know, here's the, the enemy in a isolated scenario so that you know what he's about. Now we're going to start doing combinations and fixing things up. And then eventually by the end of the game, you sort of got this like wide arsenal of abilities. And for hard but fair, it's one of the very few NES games that doesn't have continues. Lose, all, uh, lose a life, you have to do the stage again. Lose all your lives, you have to start at the beginning of the last boss fight. Uh, except for the very, very final level, you get a freebie on that one. Uh, that's that's happening, by the way. That guy up there. What do we got going on here? Oh my gosh, hi there. Come get some. Well, that's there as well. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have to deal with the actual boss, right? How much Devastator? Not much. Not enough Devastator. Okay, well, we did a bit of damage. I consider that a moral victory. This room looks uh, intriguing, doesn't it? It's a fun secret map, though. I like it. There's another mini boss chilling over there. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to be negative Nancy on this guy for making a video about God Hand, and because honestly, I do think people should play that one. Um, I haven't beaten it really, I haven't gotten that far, but I can certainly say, A, it's interesting. And uh, it probably got undue hatred at the time, uh, including uh, people who currently work at IGN have actually said that that review is like, very off the mark. Uh, they're not the people at all who made the review in the first place. But I'm, I'm glad that as an organization they're actually willing to make the call of, yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't on point. Um, oh, hi there. <laughs> got me again, got me again, it's the final stream, it's gotta get me once. Is someone gonna spawn there? Also, what is going on there? Isn't there a jetpack somewhere? I can't believe I haven't even gotten a jetpack yet. But, yeah, yeah, nah. Video essays, hey, you know, just... Don't compare things to Dark Souls all the time. Um, obviously, there's probably more to this guy's video as well, and... Oh, there's a jetpack, there you go. And given that, you know, hey, making a video on, on, uh, God Hand in at least 2021, and potentially this is a newer video, or it's a part of a newer video, it's probably, that's why I couldn't find it, maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, last point I have written down in my notes of topics I wanted to briefly mention uh, was I am still awaiting uh, the refund on the DAS. Uh, this is a another mention. CPL, you're doing me dirty. And I, I like, you know, part of me is like, oh, you know, like, it'll get sorted. And part of me is like, I bought this 12 weeks ago. And then it took three weeks to arrive. And then it took two days for me to identify the problem and send it back. Actually, it didn't. I, I sort of held onto it for a bit because they asked me to contact QNAP themselves for diagnostics. And that took a while. And then eventually I sent it back. And now they're still holding on to it, and they told me, contact the distributor and QNAP themselves, and now are proceeding to not tell me the distributor's names. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's upsetting, but this is like, they, they're now, they have told me now, I, like, I've told them, I said I wanted to refund day one, or not day one, but like, on the phone, in, in the original report, I wanted to get this thing sorted out. And just refund it and just be like out of it. And they, uh, after receiving the unit back, are adamant that they never do refunds after telling me the opposite and, you know, doing that kind of stuff. It's just like, oh my gosh, like, jeez. Um, obviously, Australian consumer law is, uh, hopefully on my side, uh, because it's like, you can't say no refunds, and certainly it's a product that isn't, uh, you know, performing as expected. So my <laughs> my grounds for returning it should be legitimate, and my uh, my reasons for wanting a refund should be quite legitimate. I I have chosen to get a refund. I don't know why. It's like, yep, no, nope, sorry, we don't do that. Like, what's that claim now? I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what country are you in, guys? Jeez. This is a cool arena, albeit you've got this going on. Okay, hold on, if we get the jetpack out, just to crap this atomic health here. But it's like... Eh. <laughs> I see what they're trying to do there. Anyway, let's uh, pop the keycard in. What we do in life that goes in eternity. Here's your eternity, you alien bitch. Pretty much, that's the end of the level, so... That's a little secret level. I got a jetpack, so that's cool. But yeah, so I... I'll continually name drop them, just because I really don't want anyone else to be in the same scenario that I'm in. Uh, and I really hope, just as a side note, I hope that QNAP, uh, this device eventually works on Linux, because uh, it really doesn't on, on my end. It could be the Atom card specifically, but the new model that they got still isn't that one. So I'm like, eh, eh. Like they're still just getting an old one from a supplier and then they're complaining that, uh, oh, the supplier doesn't want it back and we don't want to refund you if the supplier doesn't return, which is complete bull honky. That's complete bull honky. I don't care what the supplier says. <laughs> that doesn't trounce what, what is, you know, Meant to, meant to be a consumer right. What the heck? Uh, I'm angry. I'm angry. It's been weeks. I'm, I'm out of, like... Like, an actual insane amount. Like, it's act... Real talk, it's actually like $1,700. The price of the product. Like, that's not trivial amount of stuff. That's like... Yeah, I haven't bought anything new, partially because I'm out of $1,700. I can't buy a replacement, or I can't buy something to fill the time. I'm currently sitting there going, hmm, can only think about what I can get once I get the money back. Ugh. Dreadful stuff, guys. Dreadful. I think it's- I think it probably sounds worse once you actually say how much you spent with them. Um, but it's like, I, I remember being like kind of upset about something before for like 50 bucks and at some point I just conceded, I was just like, I, mm, I can't keep fighting. I can't keep fighting something that's like 50 bucks. 
1700 I'm like, I'm not, I'm not accepting. Also, when I don't have the product, actually, sorry, it was 100 bucks. It was uh, EB Games uh, wouldn't r let me refund uh, my Switch controller, and there was a firmware bug at the time, so I was constantly experiencing a problem uh, at that time. And they were like, oh, you gotta send it off to Nintendo. I was like, like, can't I go through you guys because I bought it from you guys? No, 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 you just, you need to send it to Nintendo. I'm like, uh, what? what? I literally bought it, like, that same day. I actually went home, tested it, and walked back to the store. Like... And it's, it sucks as well, because I went through two of the same Switch uh, Pro Controllers from JB Hi-Fi earlier that, um, that week. Hey, I was like, ooh. Well, not there we go, because I don't think that opened up where I needed to be. This did, though. Oh my gosh. I would like to hit the dude. Oh boy. I would really like to hit the dude. There we go. Uh, but yeah. It's so frustrating, just in general. It's like, I know, I know stores want to maximize profits, but like, I feel like, you know, is there a line to be drawn with, hey, you know, like, product needs to work. Also, was that a uh, door I just opened up? Interesting. Um, I don't know, yeah, part of me is like, product needs to work. Also, like, one, you know, a, a drive bay wasn't working as well, so okay, you needed to replace it, but also, hey, if someone comes along tomorrow, and buys that unit and wants it for Windows. I tested it works on Windows, that's fine. That's just what not my use case, and that wasn't, you know, they advertised I could use it for something else, and it didn't work like that. So, like, that's my angle on, on that. I'm like, hey, you know, even if your supplier doesn't want it, you know what, the next person will come along, buy this thing, and be like, oh look, it, you know, it does what I want it to do, cool. And then you didn't need to worry about going through me. You didn't need to worry about, like, oh, having to give it back to the supply. It's like, just just have a product, you know? Uh, I'm going to rip on CPR as well. Uh, as of today, uh, they have both online and on their Notting Hill store, which is the one that they constantly keep referring me to uh, for the online orders. Uh, which, by the way, is not in my state, and also the person um, who's uh, doing the emails said the device is for pickup now. Um, I, I, like, I haven't clarified with them that, like, uh, do they mean they'll deliver it to me? I haven't clarified that with them. But the way they made that sound was like, I have to pick it up from Victoria, from 2,000 kilometers away. Have I mentioned it's 20 kilos as well? Well, not, uh, 15. We'll say 15. He's in there. I want to push the button. But it's, oh, I'm frustrated. I'm so frustrated by that, I swear. So, rip them again. Uh, I, I will just say, just don't buy stuff from them because I, that ain't worth it. If, it, if your product works, cool. But I, in good faith, will never recommend that. I'm, I'm, I'm not encouraging anyone, like, take the gamble. The discount wasn't even that great as well. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. Sure, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, we seem to be going around, picking up a blue key card. I feel like going around is like a very <laughs> generalized statement about Duke Nukem. It was like, yeah, I was like, we need to just go back here and use the blue key card. There we go. Hopefully, though, then I can actually get a solution to uh, my storage woes. And by my storage woes, I mean more like uh, my, uh, what's the term? Very unhealthy uh, data hoarding 
kind of mindset. Although, granted, I realize as well, I, I don't have... I didn't hit record on the, um, the Cruise in USA stream, but otherwise I have every other raw recording of my, uh, of my streams. And also I still have all the, like, the versions that I uploaded of every other video on my channel. I think hopefully every other video on the channel. Um, <laughs> so it's like, I've got like, Rabid Fun one wmv uh, from 2007. That is still there. It's like May 2007. Still there on the, on the drive. Backed up. Whatever. It's great. Uh, so I really cherish that stuff. I want to make sure I don't lose it. I was thinking, I was like, that looks like where I needed to go. Hi there. Donuts just chilling everywhere. Hi there. Hi. I was like, when is this gonna hit him? Where are these guys coming from? I, I, I turned my back and suddenly, like, there's a pickup just suddenly in the room with me. Knows where he is. Oh well. Uh, 2007, I was 14 back then. Good times. I mean, it is good times. Uh, me uploading stuff back in 2007 is like, uh, are you old enough to upload to a YouTube channel? I'm like, uh, don't ask. Hit scanners, so many hit scanners. I just want to get that health that's just chilling right there. Is this guy just stuck here? Groovy. I'm hearing another one. It's a perfect time for some of the high times of certain gaming times. Peak of Pokemon. Yeah, I'd definitely say Pokemon was pretty high. I'd even say, like, you know, that was a real renaissance of, like, older, not older, but, like, Actually, yeah, kind of. Like, some franchises were, like, really taken off. Some new ones. Some old ones were like, oh my gosh. Revival. Like, I'm not saying Mario was out of date, but in that, in that one video, which, by the way, I mentioned the, 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 the video essay saying Mario Sunshine was like, oh, because the developers didn't do their jobs right. I'm like, one, I think Mario Sunshine is a pretty, like, solid game. It's not perfect, but it certainly is a solid game. Um... Also, shout out to a lot of uh, the Astrobot kind of ideas. People saying it's like, oh, it's hard. It's like, man, that is like very sunshine core. Like they like their Mario games, and it shows, and that's fine. That's that's fair. Oh my gosh. All right, let's see if we can get them. I don't think that's worth it, really. Uh, GBA and DS, uh, even though there were many games I never played. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, there's still tons where I'm just like, you know, I never even heard these GBA games, but then you see other people talk about them, and that, I mean, that's the joy with, you know, preservation and that kind of stuff. Through some means or another, one will find a way to preserve and relive these, uh, these glory days. More than 64, which had... Uh, little details in the levels. Yeah, yeah, Sunshine, I mean, Sunshine definitely has a lot of, like, care into making the levels stand out and having having lots of unique aspects, and I like the more set pieces style moments as well. Um, the side areas, I think, are curious. I don't think they're quite as, like, you know, eh, not, not in the same way as Galaxy. I, I do prefer Galaxy a lot. Um, 64 definitely, I give a bit more of a free pass, but like, it's also like, you know, uh, here's a question, have people realized that there's only like, five world songs in the game? <laughs> oh. 
There's a drop and a half. Is this, they actually expect you, no, they haven't given me a jetpack. I was like, no way do they just casually expect you now. I think you have to do some hardcore parkour. Because the rails stick out just that right amount. And then you run through the whole bit because you really don't want to deal with these guys in a, in a cramped environment. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, pain. Um, but yeah, I, I do like Sun, uh, 64 a lot. Uh, Sunshine has its frustrating bits. The camera is not necessarily one of them, but they do give you a lot of free reign, and therefore some of the levels, it is a lot more, what's the term? Looser? Mario 64's was quite, like, certain. Uh, but also then the levels were designed quite like orthographically, like it's like there's a bunch of squares basically, or 45 degree angles. And they knew that and that's fine. Sunshine has uh, weird slippery platforms because where does the slope, what, what can you stand on, what can you not stand on, uh, it's sort of something you figure out a bit throughout the game. And Galaxy makes it quite simple. There's rarely a time when you'd even have to think of it because... Gosh, right. Oh my goodness. Jeez. It's like, what? Is there a boss? Am I getting hit by a boss across the room? I am getting hit by a boss across the room. Oh, I don't <sighs> Cheeky good lads. Hi, how many how many bosses are we dealing with here? And we still got a force field over there, so I'm just like, uh Oh my gosh. Ah jeez, ah, I'm just like trying to juggle this all while I don't have like Hot keys for my for the, the abilities. Meanwhile, while this wow, there's way too many enemies for me to deal with right here. Jeez, back out! Oh my gosh, this is my fault for running through the room. Oh no! And I see the atomic health up there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna concede, not grab it. Just okay, take it piece by piece. Dudes I can take. Dudes I can take. <laughs> just focus on right here. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, oh. Step out of line. Let the rockets hit the wall. Okay. Move onwards. Hit this guy a bit. Lost too much health. And I'll just accept that. I don't, I don't care. Uh, I know that there's this going on up here. I got the wee booties. Okay. Mm. Rockets. Okay. Now he's dead. Okay, so now what happens? Because I've killed both of the bosses, unless they didn't program that at all, and it's just enemies. It's probably just enemies. What? Okay, they're able, either they're able to get out or something's making them appear on me, but okay, sure. Uh, let's see. Like, I keep wandering around here. I haven't explicitly hit a button or anything. That's not an open wall. I was like, which one, which one is open, if any of them are? Uh, you can still hit me through the, oh. 
Now it's open. Jeez, a bit insane, eh? You know exactly what's gonna happen behind that door. Why are they giving me so many weapons? You know exactly what's behind this door. Is it... Is there anything? Or is that actually just... Window dressing? No. No way. Makes it look like there's a crack, but... No. Ah. What... What is that? Is that a sentry just stuck there? Oh. You know where this is going. There we go. That, ah, yep, okay. You knew where it was going. Claustrophobic fight, I'm not gonna lie. At least you do get walls to hide behind. Probably not the best way to fight him though. Probably wanna deal with this. And just get him from a distance, I guess. That's how it's done. Easy money. Easy money. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'll definitely give the, uh... Give the call of, uh... Yeah, some of these levels go a bit insane with the, with the bosses. And while they're, you know, I guess they're generous enough with the health and ammo, it's also like, oh my gosh, jeez. We're up to Golden Carnage. What, San Francisco? We're in the futuristic year of today. I like this level a lot because I am a sucker for bridges. Bridges, submarines, uh, volcanoes. There's lots of cool places you can make a level. Bridges are always great. You're constantly getting pelted at by people and you can go underwater and it's just a massive underwater section. And the sharks. We brought the sharks back. Um... Also, they give you an invisible wall, just to, just to, just to not go too far. Um... That was a nice strafe run, I hope you appreciated that one, because I think you're meant to... Why are you meant to be able to strafe run there? They should know you, you can do a strafe run. Um, but there's lots of places you can go to. Like, you can see the submarines over here. And obviously, yeah, you can go into the submarines. Which are obviously slightly bigger looking on the inside. Did I just get hit by every single one of those shots as well? Just to add insult to injury. And it's levels like this where I was like, I know it's only 8 levels. But it probably is... That's good fun, by the way, actually being able to take out the boss like that. Um, but it's a lot of, like, fun different levels, and I, I like the settings, I like um, the music especially. Props are doing a, a unique song in every level. Like, it really does feel like this is how you do Duke Nukem 3D levels with the, with the engine limits turned off. Alive. Um, getting John St. John back is great, although, to be fair, remember, this only came out five years after Duke Nukem Forever. I don't think he was, like, fully checked out yet. Can you get down from there? Ouch. Okay, you can really get down from- oh my gosh. It's very hard to, like, get them all up there. 
There you go. A little checkpoint. And a shrink ray. Or expandinator. One of the two. It's been a while since we've seen these guys, eh? I appreciate they're a little conservative with that flamethrower enemy, because uh, that thing is really annoying, but also... It hasn't shown up quite much. Also, oh, the angle is a little weird. It tried. It tried its best. Ow, what? Oh. It's just chilling there. Now I can use this to jump the gap, and then immediately have a bunch of sentries spawn on us. But yeah, uh, I do want there to be more games that are like this, in terms of like, you know, give these old games the fancy treatment and get either original level designers or some really talented people to work on making something official. Just like, you know bring it a bit of new life because a lot of these old shooters it's like they're still quite relevant in terms of mechanics like Duke Nukem 3D while obviously yeah it's an old game you got this like older engine that doesn't support you know true 3D that kind of stuff it's also like yeah but it's a game where you run and shoot things and you got some wacky power-ups and items and things like that and all of that still makes sense I don't think really anyone questions Duke Nukem 3D um You know, in terms of, like, it being an old game. And there's some games that are, like, old and actually quite, like, uh, dare I say, antiquated. Where it's, like, the legit... Like, for example, um, uh, an old Apogee shooter. I think it runs on the Wolfenstein engine called Blake Stone. And I've played uh, a, a bit of it. And it's like, man, they really, really, really had, like, one idea with the way that floors were designed. They just went with it, and that's fine, but then you, you get the gist, you get the gist for a long time. And they just expect to pad it out by having, like, keys and backtracking and all that stuff on, like, fairly repetitive, like, levels. It, it, it does feel very of its time, and to some degree Wolfenstein 3D is as well. That's a hot take for me, though. Um... You know what I mean? It's like, I think there's something great about, like, Doom's level design that just makes, like, it stand out so much more than Wolfenstein. Come back here! Come back here! Did I get him, or is he just... Oh, he was just ducking in the water. Okay. Well, back to the bridge jump again. And our good old bus jump here, which lets us get over here, and that's where we need to go. And also, they tip this platform just to let me get back up, anyways. Oh, I really want to take these guys out with a pistol or something. Ah. Oh my gosh. Uh, the ones we played as, uh, one thing about old games is that we remember the good ones. Oh, exactly. I, I famously, uh, when I grew up, I played, I have a, was it the Rugrats movie on the Game Boy Color as a game. And, uh, out of all these childhood games that I'm playing, you know, through again on stream, uh, the Rugrats movie game ain't one of them. Because I hate that game. It's like, it's like a very clunky platformer. And then imagine a very clunky platformer that expects you to pick up every single item in a level in order to continue. And it also has a time limit, and also you run out of lives real easily. At least as a kid. I haven't really dared go back to it. Um, maybe, maybe one day I face my fears. You like that, by the way? Oh, it's gone on all the way back there as well. Can I send it back? Bring it out back. I mean, yeah, not to say that, like, bad games... 
uh, oh, sorry, how do I put it? When you're a kid, a bad game, sometimes you just accept the bad games, because it's like, well, it's the kind of stuff, it's the only stuff that you have, so you sort of accept it sometimes. Yeah, some games it's, it's good fun to like... Oh, I thought I'd get the next one, which would be cool. Well, like, uh, like, all for this one little ledge here, which is very important. Because this ledge has... Why am I getting hit by every single time I breathe? Those rockets, or it's just it's just the one turret that I didn't hit. Lots of these things, though. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, like I agree that like we probably do only remember the the best ones. Ouch. Um. But a part of it is also, like, I think as kids we did sometimes accept a bit more than what we, you know, do as adults. Um, and, uh... I, didn't, I don't know where I was going at this point, to, to be fair. Moral of the story is people should play, uh... Uh, Astrobot, I guess. Uh, there's... I don't think antiquated games, uh... Like, necessarily... Sometimes it's, it's, um, I guess historical, or like contextual based on history. I'm gonna take one more crack at this. Ah, oh, so close. Um, obviously, you know, when you didn't have games like Doom, it was very easy for games to, you know... What the... What the... Get down from the bro. shouldn't be up there in the first place. Um, but, yeah, like, it depends. I I, I don't want to say all, I, I certainly don't want to say all old games are antiquated, because here I am playing Fantasy Star 2 for the first time, and I'm like, it's, it, it's cleaned up some of the things I didn't like about the first game, particularly uh, the dungeon design uh, is actually dungeons now. Um, but on the flip side, it's like, eh, the dungeons are still kind of long and insane, so... Uh, we'll dive more into it. I'll, I'll speak more about it once I've played more through it. Um, I spent this past week playing uh, two games. One being uh, Brand New Hero, uh, which is a uh, clone hero uh, song pack uh, for basically every single song by Brand New. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty alright, but I played uh, the Guitar Hero 2 Deluxe version of it. Uh, someone ported all to that, and I don't know, I don't think it's official uh, by the same guy, but... Um, it's definitely, like, there are some things where it's like, uh, Sewing Season has one bit in verse 3B. It has a bit where uh, there's a, in the Clone Hero chart, there's like a... Uh, hammer on pull off between blue orange chords and blue notes and it's super duper quick and it's probably like like re real tight but on the guitar hero 2 deluxe version because chords don't have hammer ons and also sometimes same note uh like going from a chord to one of the same notes doesn't necessarily mean a hammer on as well uh, every single one of those notes that traditionally was a hammer-on is now just a strum, and that is an incredibly fast strum part uh, with an incredibly fast trill, just casually in the song. And it's wildly off in terms of difficulty. Not a lot of the other songs have those wild bits of difficulty, but I'd also say the charts themselves on that album in particular, because it's every song. That album in particular, the songs are kind of charted a bit more intensely than the other ones. I think I found I could FC most of it. Quite a large amount of it, I could. That rock texture is giving me like, oh, why is it cracked like that? It's not like I'm breaking it little bit by bit. These explosive barrels are throwing me off though, because I know someone's gonna ha have some blind fire and hit it. Um, 
Well, I'd say it's pretty alright overall. Uh, and uh, the retro achievement set is very, uh, as it comes, um, it's like, you know, you get, you get so many uh, percentage of the notes and you FC them, because you might as well check the FCs in the same set. And that's kind of it. Play through most of the songs in, like, one sitting, like all the ones from one album in one sitting. Um, sure, okay. Uh, it's worth a lot of points on Retro Achievements, I'll tell you that, like, it's 83 songs, it's definitely a lot of songs, but it's also, like, is it wildly that more, like, effort than other rhythm games, including other Guitar Heroes? I feel like it could probably adjust the points a little bit. It is doing FCs in the main set, though, that is the one thing. Um, so, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, lots of, lots of easy points for me in particular, because, uh, I've played tons of Guitar Hero. When I say, like, oh, I can FC most of this stuff, I'm starting to think, like, oh, at what point am I getting, like, dangerously good at Guitar Hero when it's like, oh, you know, I could just start, like, FCing all these songs I've, you know, never heard of, and, uh, playing now for the first time. But I legitimately think, like, a lot of, some of these are just like, oh, I play for it once and then I can kind of get the gist. Um, but I'd also say a lot of these songs don't have, like, solos or other kind of wacky parts. Wonder what's through this door? Who knows? Doesn't open up. I know I have the jetpack, I could probably just jump to where I need to be, but... We're gonna do this legit, dang it! We're gonna figure out this large bridge level. I have... not quite remembered where exactly you go, although... I went through here as the connecting bit. We need the red key card. So I get the hunch that it's like, oh, there should be a red key card somewhere around after here. Right? That makes sense. Other than this, like, explosive wall. Which kind of looks like it explodes, but not quite. Is it explosive on the other side? It's a door on the other side. Maybe I should go in here instead of just looking at it. Everyone's favorite enemies. Ah! Uh, we gotta have our spiral staircase though, don't we? Is there one more? I gotta sneeze. Ah! <laughs> Trying more explosives? I'm thinking I could probably just come back in like a moment. Something will probably open up. I know we had to get onto this roof anyways. Look at that, they spawned in the turrets. And these chaps. Man, I just hate how many turrets, because it's just like, oh my gosh. Bullet spam. Alright, let's get these bigger lads. He just sat there, didn't he? Come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Uh, the other game that I played, uh, and this one's a fun little one. I'd give it a go, is uh, Hatsune Miku Bomb Squad. It's a, uh, a, a Game Boy Studio uh, itch.io game. Uh, forgotten the dev, I'm sorry my man. But he's made another game. And he's a, he's aware of the Retro Achievement set, good on him. And uh, big props uh, for making it. But no, g give it a check out. It's a very fun little short half hour or so puzzle game. Uh, you basically got a bomb. Uh, and the, the bomb has uh, a pattern on it. Uh, starts off being a 2x2 two two grid. Where you have uh, a blue moon, a red moon, a blue star, and a red star. And you have to follow the instructions. Sometimes the instructions are visual, sometimes the instructions are uh, a bit more wordy. But they usually give you clues that will let you piece together. Oh, okay, the, the arrangement of the shapes of the tiles is like this. And then uh, one solution uh, fits all. Or what, sorry, not one solution fits all. There's only one solution for that one puzzle. So, by deduction, you figure out where your, your, your things have to be. 
Uh, okay, we didn't figure out this, by the way, but just, just for note, like... It don't do nothing. It don't, it don't be doing it. Uh, but yeah, no, very, very fun game. It, it, it gets larger as well. You start introducing another color and then another shape. And then some of the clues are a bit more, um, obscure. Or, like, some of them start going, oh, you know, like, there's moons above, like, stars, or things like that, like, you know, so you gotta go, oh, okay, what do they mean by that? And you try to put all the rules in order in your head, and you put them in, see what happens. I do appreciate that the game doesn't tell you anything beyond you're wrong as well. It doesn't tell you if you're partially correct, just so you don't attempt to, like, trial and error the guesses. Like, you do have to know what you're doing. Uh, this is a, a situation, by the way. Yeah, it's like, insane amount of enemies right here. that only at the, the last moment. We're good, are we heading them? There we go. Okay, we're good. It's a lot of dudes here. I'm actually curious if the uh, the YouTube video is gonna like be like bit right crushed trying to watch this happen, or it'll be okay. I think it'll be generally okay. A uh, shout out, by the way, uh, YouTube taking down uh, with a uh, what's it? It's like a content guideline strike, not a community strike, a content guideline strike. Uh, they took down Linus Tech Tips video, uh, D Google Find Your Life Part Two, and I'm. Here's why part one is okay, um, but part two in particular, they did mention uh, various things that as a uh, as a YouTube creator, you cannot talk about. It involves circumnavigating uh, basically how YouTube makes money uh, through advertising. Uh, having things like being able to download videos using certain tools that uh, exist on GitHub, and YouTube tried to DMCA those tools and failed. Fun fact, by the way. Because it legitimately doesn't infringe on copyright. It's a tool that they made that literally just does a thing that sort of happens on the website already. And it's sort of Google's fault that you're able to even access it like that. That was a fun level though. We got one more level to go and then that's it. That's Duke Nukem 3D. And this one's not as long a level as well. Hollywood Inferno. I like how the cacti do hurt as well. I do like the, the big Hollywood sign up the top and this whole kind of up the cliff level design. It works well as long as you make sure the enemies work. Yeah, it's it's been seven Duke Nukem streams. I apologize to one guy who recommended another Duke Nukem like mod pack. I'm like, I'm not I'm not playing another <laughs> another Duke Nukem 3D mod pack. We're we're leaving it as all the official content. So we had the base game, uh, which was like two streams. Uh, the Atomic Edition 4th episode, the Duke Zone 2 kind of mm, more average, just kind of level pack, uh, the Duke in DC expansion, which was fairly good, uh, Duke Nuclear Winter, Duke uh, Caribbean Life's a Beach, and finally this, across seven streams, which has been generally about on point of like, all these other kind of remastered titles, but it's a lot of stuff, and also, oh my gosh, hi there, by the way. It's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of Duke Nukem, and I completely get that, yeah, no, I think, I, I think that's, that's my job done, is we've shown off, uh, you know, where Duke Nukem was, where it's not good, where it is good, and where it sort of ends off. 
and it's fairly good level pack. And I got it. Oh my gosh, my nose is triple again. Jeez. Yeah, piece of cake. Bit of a bit of a weird. Oh my gosh, I keep walking into cacti. Am I getting hit by a turret over there, or what? what a mess. That should be good, but... Yeah, yeah, no, um... Like, I've been enjoying these, uh... Oh, yeah, totally, there's a turret. Oh, worse than a turret. Uh, but no, I've been enjoying playing through this game again, and I think it's certainly, like... It's got some things that it's really held up with, and some things which are a bit like, hey, hey sure, okay. Um, but certainly, I think what makes New Kukum 3D, you know, iconic is its level design. It is such very, very striking level design, especially for its era, when there's lots of games still doing very abstract kinds of ideas. And here's this just going, yeah, you know, like, these are cars built into the map layout and the tooling to build the maps is great so uh sure yeah i'll accept that i'll accept that outcome i like how far away these are i think i can actually stand in the middle and yeah and not get hit by them because they're so far not these ones, though. Suck it down. I'm gonna trip on that at some point. <laughs> it's like, it's like, man, those, those trip mines were so far away from the ends of the lasers. Things like the pipe bomb as well, it's like, ah, oh, it just works. It just feels like it should. Because there's lots of games where, like, you, know, you don't throw a thing and it really lands quite where you want it to. Ouch. It's still a bit of uh, trying to figure out where in 3D space some of the enemies are. Because, I mean, you know, it, it does use 2D sprites, but it's going to have to have some 3D calculations here and there, and... Sometimes that happens because uh, we're dealing with these guys. Oh my gosh, again. One last time for good measure. <laughs> I could do it without those guys. I could do it without the... Just any of that, really. <laughs> I'm hitting all these like little dudes, I swear. Okay, we are nearly there, right at the end of this whole, this whole expansion. That's right. More pick cops, why not? But yeah, no, the enemies are iconic. Duke as a character is very iconic, which is something that, you know, you could argue a bit more than like Doom or Quake. It's like, yeah, the Quake Ranger is just, he, uh, he, he grunts, he grunts, Rawr. that's fine. But it's also like, you know, there's a place for a, um, for a character who never shuts up. So, uh, Danger High Voltage Hollywood Maintenance Transporter. There you are. So here we go. Uh, that's right. The flamethrower enemy is indeed the final boss. And I also like how you can shoot down these letters. Very nice. Almost as iconic as the holly, uh, as the uh, the football pitch. Unfortunately, uh, he's got a bit of health. Fortunately, though, he doesn't hit very far, and he also sets fire to all of his comrades. I would like to hit you with the uh, with the ability instead of. There you go. Easy money. I wish I knew how to quit you. And then, uh, cooks his, uh, cooks his testicles, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's it.
that's Duke Nukem 3D, the 20th anniversary levels. Uh, and that's Duke Nukem 3D as a whole. We're done. We're done with it all. It's been good fun. I've missed basically every secret. It's been real good fun. I... Uh, yeah. I, uh, what, what can I say? I've sort of said it like six times already. <laughs> it's been... There's been lots of releases. We've seen the bad, we've seen the good. And I think this is... Sort of where... Hold on, we have as well. Oh, unfortunately we don't have the credits to... The, um, the... The final expansion. Or do, do we have the credits to any other expansion while we're at it? Who knows. Um, but yeah, no. Go, go play Duke Nukem 3D. I enjoy it. Go find a copy of, uh... At least two of the expansions, the Duke and DC and the Duke uh, uh, Caribbean expansions are well worth playing. Um, and yeah, no, it's it's good. It's great. It's iconic. I don't know. I have too much more to say. So with that, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy this, uh, you can feel free to follow on Twitch. I stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern uh, Standard Time, at least for a, another few weeks. Uh, Daylight Savings is next month, so there's that. Uh, happy Cherno Day, 9th of September. If you uh, missed parts of this, or you want to see it on... Well, you know, if you're on YouTube, you, you'll see all the other streams, though. So. See you around, hopefully I'll be able to join you next week as well. Yeah, no, it's been good fun. It's definitely been good fun chatting. And uh, yeah, next week, um, actually for the next two weeks, I'm trying to pad out because I have Halloween stuff, but there's three more weeks of September. So <laughs> I'm like... I gotta find some, you know, three weeks worth of stuff to go. But I, I've got some ideas, don't worry. Um, but yeah, no, you can you can subscribe on YouTube. Lots of people are subscribing on YouTube. We might hit 2,000 subs at the end of the year. That'll be a, a fun milestone, I guess. Um, I could play Metro Prime again. True, true. Metro Prime 2 is a bit longer than three weeks, so I'm gonna wait off on that one for a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, that'd be... That'd be I don't know. Well, I, I, I'll figure out something. So until then, stay safe. Oh, yeah, you can follow me on, on uh, the Fetty, uh, m.bnl.com where you can see some ramblings from time to time. So um, uh, three, four hour streams last time. It was it was two four hour streams. It was it was like seven hours total, but I was very dead after that four hour stream. So no four hour streams for me. <laughs> Granted, though, I think I like I missed the thing as well. I missed one scan. So they added like 20 minutes. So there you go. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone, have a good one, see ya.